what I realized was this tree has fucking spina bifida. It has scoliosis. Scoliosis. I don't know. Oh, fuck, I can't say it. So 10, we're rolling. The holiday episode. It's December 19th as I'm filming this. Great city of Toronto. Cold as fuck. Show December. No dick. No energy. Who cares? That's the holidays for you. But we're here. We're episode 10. We're double digits. Now, do we have triple digit subscribers yet? We don't. So, let's get me to a fucking hundo before the new year. I'm going to lose it. Um... It's so maybe the last episode before the new year. Boxing day. Yeah, I might do it another two. We'll see. I might take some time off. Working hard. Not really. But, uh, yeah, episode 10. UFC shirt. Big UFC guy. First card I ever went to, actually. It was John Jones Machida in Toronto. Great time. And last week's card was fucking absolutely wild. Colby and Usman, what a fight, what a night. I'm not going to get too much into that because this isn't a UFC pod. May, get, may do one next year, though, a sport one. We'll see. Need to get Chin. we got to hire Chin. Once we hire Chin, this thing is going to fucking take off. And then life's going to fucking change. Until then, when it's just me working with a fucking USB mic on an you know, iMovie, it's the best we can do, folks. So, God bless you. But, uh, fucking lots happen. We got a lot of notes here. Still recording, thank God. Once you record a pod and it doesn't record, I check every five seconds to make sure it's recording because I'd lose it. I got a half decent haircut too. A little too short. I mean, it's a little, you know, winded weather, but it's not half bad. I got a giant head and I'm super pale with little ears. Cool. But, you know what? That's me. And I gotta live with that. And you do too. So, it's great. Uh, let's start some sort of a little serious note here. We'll go with the who cares serious pod. But I always usually get super depressed around New Year's because I'm like, fuck, you know, a whole year's gone by. I've done dick all, you know, and I'm like, you know, you look back at all your goals or things you want to do and you're like, fuck, I didn't even remotely achieve any of them. So you're like naturally depressed. I can say this is one of the first kind of end of the years where I'm feeling pretty fucking good. I'm not... You know, I'm not feeling phenomenal. Like, oh, I've achieved everything I want in life, which, you know, I don't, you never probably feel that way. But I feel pretty good. I feel like I've, I've changed a lot of things. I feel like I'm doing good. I feel like I'm in a good place, you know. That's, you know, kind of corny to say, but I feel it, you know. I don't, I don't really party anymore. I kind of focus on my writing and, you know, trying to build this pod and get better at it. So I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I was talking to somebody about this today and, uh, some, they said something like, oh, like everything has a reason, right? Which that's somewhat true, but I think the biggest life lesson I, I can take in 2020 is that a lot of times it's just you fucking self-sabotaging yourself and making terrible choices that put you in a tough spot and then bad stuff happens. So it's like, yeah, everything has a reason, but it's like, if you just set yourself up to fucking be fucked and put yourself in a ditch, it's going to be hard to dig out of it. Like, I don't know who, I don't know when... Somebody said this to me and I thought about it, but like a lot of my life, I always put like future Jake in a hole. Like I always put that, I fucked that guy over so many times where I would just put him in like, Hey, you know, this isn't going to affect me tonight. It's going to be great. But three days from now, that version of me, that guy's going to be fucked. Like he's just, it's going to be impossible to dig himself out of this hole. So you never really can do anything in life that way. You just go through and you're, you know, even if you put a great effort, you're just getting back to normal. You're not, you know going farther in life so probably the biggest life lesson of 2020 you know just not self-sabotaging and then also like the thing with self-sabotage is you fuck yourself over and then you you know you play the poor me card and you pity yourself and you're like oh fuck like you know everything goes wrong for me like and you feel bad about it that's double sewering yourself because you've already fucked yourself by whatever you did and then sitting around like having pity for yourself you're wasting even more time making everything worse so really try to avoid that those are just some things I learned in 2019 going into 2020 to fucking blow up and take over the world. So there you go. A little motivational pod here. Speaking of uh, New Year's, New Year's Eve too. I mean, most cookie cutter event in the world by a mile. At the end of the day, this is the most Toronto event in the world. Let's pay $50 to go to some bar that normally would cost 
well, in Toronto, probably still $50, but let's just say 20 And then you're going to fucking get blackout, do blow till fucking 5 a.m., wake up on a couch with a tranny. And that's your night. That's how you're starting the year. So talk about starting the year on a fucking, in a hole. It's going to be near impossible to have a successful year. And that's literally exactly how I started my year last year. But, uh, and it's just like, what are you celebrating? Like, a lot of times people are just like, oh, I just survived this year. Like, I saw a meme too. It's like, oh, 2019, like, like, it's something like this week. What the fuck was it? It's like, this year has been such a long week. Or this week's been such a, some stupid bullshit like that. It's just like, these people who post these things, it's like, you realize you're in control of your life. Like, you're the one making choices and decisions that are either going to benefit you and get you to where you want to be, or you're just going to succumb to, uh, I just work a job I hate and fucking do nothing and get mad at everyone and then go, oh, another year went by, it was such a hard year. It's like, well, you didn't do anything. Like, you're not even taking a shot at life. You're just letting it fucking pass by and going, oh, fuck, I wish I would have done this or I did this or... It's like, dude, like you're, it's literally the Gary Vee thing. It's like, you're going to die one day. This is all fucking very temporary. So at least do the things you want to fucking go for and try. Even if you fuck it up and you're terrible, at least you can be like, oh, I tried that. It's better than just being the person going, oh, fuck, every year it's so hard. It's, hard. it's like, then people blame the world for things like, oh, the world, just, it's harder now. It's just that. It's like, great, it may be. But what are you doing to combat that? You're just doing nothing. It's going, oh, things are tough nowadays. Things have always been tough. Or things have always been great, depending how you look at it, you know? I don't know. I, I don't want to turn into fucking Tony Robbins on this pod, because I know last week I was pretty negative. That's the thing, you know? There's ebb and flow of life. You're feeling good, you're feeling shitty. A new haircut will change your fucking life, I'll tell you that much. A half-decent haircut will change your fucking outlook on life. If I lost some weight and got a tan, it'd be tough not to be positive. I'd be fucking Johnny Positive out here. Uh, but yeah, so New Year's Eve, I'm not going out, I'm fucking doing a Bible study and hanging out, but if there's any dope events, invite me, I'll fucking be there. But, uh, <laughs> fuck, once, man, like, once this fucking pod blows up, we get a chin, we get fucking Facebook, Instagram ads going, we get a viral clip, once this shit fucking blows up, man, it's gonna be next level. We're doing fucking live shows, our merch, like, our shirts and stuff we make are gonna be fucking unbelievable. And the live shows, people are going to be repping them. And then the after party, we're going to be having fucking orgies. It's going to be a time, man. It's going to be a fucking time. And you 70-something people that are here now can be like, I got it on the fucking ground floor. This is like getting in fucking stocks and Apple in the 80s. You're going to be there when it blows up. So fucking good on you. Because I can't fucking wait for 2020 for this shit to pop off. And be in fucking LA hanging out with... Fuck, who's cool out there? I don't know. I mean... Obviously, hey, all the comedians hanging out with fucking Logan Paul, doing a boxing class with him, going to Dan Blazarian's Halloween. It's going to be phenomenal. We're going to be getting herpied up. It's going to be the fucking best time ever. So, I can't fucking wait. <sighs> Fuck, man. You know, <laughs> you know, you ever, like, for those of you who work out, I haven't had any pre-workout yet today. Like, I'm going to the gym after this. When you take pre-workout, the con- you're literally McGregor level of confidence. Like... The shit I say when I drink pre-workout and then somebody starts talking to me on Snapchat or text. I literally said, I wrote some of these down because it's just such a pre-workout high. You're just flying. And I said to somebody, I go, <laughs> this is just like me. Like after work, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm still, I'm, I don't roid or eat that healthy. So I'm just kind of a guy who works out and looks like half decent. Like, oh, this guy might pound weights, but you know, I'll drink a beer. I'll have a burger. I'm not going to be a pussy, you know? But, uh, you know, I'm on the treadmill after just trying to do some cardio and combat, you know, the pizza I ate the night before. I said this to somebody, I go, I'm the most underrated and the favorite at the same time. <laughs> what? <laughs> First off, that's impossible, sir. Second off, what does that mean? You can't, you can be the most underrated. Fair. You can do that. You can't be the favorite at the same time. I'm literally saying I'm the most underrated and the favorite at the same time. I'm a rapper now, dude. I'm fucking Russ. I'm a rapper, man. I'm out here fucking taking the world over and I'm a rapper. I get fucking straight up though. I'm going to have a hit single as a DJ. I'm going to partner with Loud Luxury or somebody dope and have a hit single for a summer i'm just gonna travel around at fucking edm events just mm, 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 mm. just 
Molly Perk, Molly Perk, Molly Perk, and just party, man. One summer this is going down. I'm gonna have a fucking roid. I'm making a fucking arm sleeve. I'm going in, dude. I'm going fucking deep. One summer. Hit single and just I'm gonna be the biggest rave guy. I'm 24, so I gotta do it soon because there's nothing sadder than the old rave rave guy. The guy who's like 35, 40, and you're like, man, you know. He has a bit of a GH got going, he's got guy on his tits. You're like, I don't know if you should be here, man. You should probably have a family at some point. You know, he's like just mm, 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 mm. But, you know, maybe I'll be that guy. Who knows? Who knows how life will fucking, you know, play out. Hopefully not, but who knows. And also, I was thinking about this too, non-pre-workout high. This is literally like a podcast. It's just background noise for people that are probably jerking off. Like, the amount of times I've been watching a pod on YouTube and just lower the volume a bit and just went, oh, fuck, what do we got here? And started beating off. Countless. So... I was thinking about this, I'm like, can you imagine somebody's listening to this pod and just being like, whacking off right now? And I hope somebody's doing it right now and heard like, oh my god, did he just call me out? Can he fucking hear me? I can, dude. And you keep going. You watch that fucking Athena Palomino video, and you get in there. You get busy. She's my favorite. She's a fucking absolute legend. If you don't know her, look her up. Athena Palomino. Doesn't get much better, in my opinion. Blonde, thick, got a dumper on her. I mean, what more do you need in life? And also this pod is, uh, I guess just for people, you know, in an office right now with their earbuds in, trying not to work and, you know, driving home. You want to laugh, you want to get in the, you know, the weekend mode. And that's what I'm here for. That's my job, dude. I'm taking this as a fucking career, dude. I'm serious, man. Not really, but no, I kind of am, I guess. So I got a paperclip on my finger. We're rolling, man. I'm fucking Matthew McConaughey with the paperclip. Fuck, we're flying, Frankie. 12 minutes in. We got a lot of notes. We got a lot to get through. <sighs> ASMR break. You already know what it is. But, uh, yeah, I want to do some other things, like different episodes in the new year. Like, I want to have a movie podcast. Maybe a UFC one. Stuff I want to talk about. It's just, I get the right editors and the right equipment to really do it properly. Because right now... I don't really want to do the production side. It's not even high enough quality. I don't want to do it on my own. I want to write sketches and do more video and do more pod stuff, but I got to build the right team. So it takes time, but, uh, what? it is December 19th. Like I said, so Christmas around the corner, I haven't bought one gift on that guy, but we'll get something. Only a few people I care about enough to get stuff. Really? I was laughing about this. Too. It's like, can you imagine, like, you know, there's somebody out there, right, who just doesn't get one gift, not even one. Like, they wake up Christmas Day and they're like, "I got zero gifts." I'm not like a poor kid in Africa. That's totally different. I'm talking like a human being in North America who nobody gets them a gift. They might not even a text, not nothing. I don't know what's worse, that guy having to deal with like, "Oh, I got nothing," and just you know, complete suicide watch, or is it a realization of him going? I'm such a shithead and such a bad person that nobody in my life got me a gift. I gotta be better. I don't know which one it is, but that guy's probably my dad, <laughs> realistically. So, no, I'll get the old man something. I'll get him something cool. I don't know. One year I got him a uh, a snuggie, like you know, <laughs> not. I think it's a snuggie. Like you know the one that goes all over you. Not that one. It was for his cock, <laughs> like just the snuggie for his penis, which I came out of one day back in the day. Nine months before January 7. So, that was cool. I used to hang out in this cock and just kind of, you know, debate about what I wanted to be and think about life. But, so yeah, I got him a Snuggie at a family event. He opened it and big laugh, big laugh. The family loved it. You know, they, they expected some sort of perversion from me and I delivered. So, that was a great gift. But, it's tough to get my dad stuff because it's always like, oh, I just want your help, you know, because he's selling his house and doing all that. But, uh, I got to find something cool. I don't know, last year I got him a, uh, this old bowling alley we went to, Brantford Bowling. We went to Echo Bowl a lot when I was a kid, but Brantford Bowling went a few times. And uh, they're tearing the place down, so I got the sign. I got this giant fucking Brantford Bowling sign that's dope. And our neighbors, there's like spray paint on it. So I have this lesbian neighbor who's just a savage, and she uh, got all this, like all the spray paint off of it. So I was like, fuck, that's awesome. And uh, I gave him the sign, and he's like, what is this? <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. 
I was like, oh, it's or he took me bowling like March break and for my birthdays and stuff. And he's like, oh, okay. Just sits in his garage, <laughs> complete waste of a gift. I thought it was cool though. And once I have a studio, like a big fucking legit studio, like a Pat McAfee fucking Rogan type thing where we just have a studio, we got a gym, we got green screens, the whole nine. I'll put it up there and it'll be fucking dope. But he didn't care, so that's uh, that's good. Kind of sad, but also good. And also, I just want people out there to know, like, me and my dad are actually cool. Like, I like I fuck with him and I'll make fun of him and stuff. But like, it's actually like we're buddies. Like, I'm not I'm not like a guy who's like has like oh I have daddy issues. I hate him. Like, no, no, no. I like him. I just I gotta fuck with him. Like that that proves you know. But if somebody else tried to talk shit about him, I'd be like, fuck you. I have to fight you now. We're in a UFC show. I gotta go ya. Yeah. But it's all love. Taught me a lot of stuff growing up. How to like communicate, negotiate, you know. We sold keychains at Friday the 13th when I was a kid. Like motorcycle Hot Wheel ones. And I remember being like, I was like six or seven. Missing the day off school. And I had like a, a board with all these keychains on it. And we made like a thousand bucks that day. So it was, it was sick. Um, I probably spent half of it on fucking hot dogs and Mountain Dew. Nothing's changed since then. But uh, this big Hells Angels guy comes up to me. He's smoking a, a stogie. A huge stogie. He goes... Oh, they're fucking dope, kid. And I'm like, shit in my pants. Like, oh, fuck, take him, sir, right? And then him and his chick bought a couple. And I was like, oh, like, okay. So it was, it was a wild day. But, uh, yeah, we used to, like, just, like, I would take weeks off. Not weeks, but days off of high school chasing, like, Hot Wheels and different McFarlands. Because in the morning, they'd release new ones. And my dad would, like, buy the chick coffee. So we'd know, okay, they're coming out here. Like, McFarland, which were, like, action figures. So, like, oh, there'd be, like, a Wayne Gretzky figure, a variant. So we'd go from, like, Brantford, Cambridge, Kitchener, and water, like, everywhere, the whole thing. And we'd go to Brantford in the morning because it was, like, at 8. And I don't think school started until 9. So if they came out in Brantford, we knew, fuck, they're coming out, you know, everywhere else. And the other stores didn't open until 9. So we'd be like, okay, you're taking the day off school. We're going. And we'd just hit every spot and then come home, post them on eBay, sell them. And this is, like, early days of eBay. So it's, like, the auction. Like, we were just freaking out. Like, oh, it's going up. Like, every, you know, every time we'd refresh, it'd go up, like, 20 bucks. And then we'd have that money and you'd take me to Raptors games. So it was, you know, I never really went to school. But uh, I think a lot of times school, I was always smart enough to not really need it. Like, I was always ahead of my grade, like, as far as reading and, like, figuring shit out. I need to sit there and fucking just do nothing. Like, a lot of times in school, you're just bullshitting. So I got what I needed. We got the university degree from Sir Isaac Brock. It worked out. Doing a podcast. But uh, those are some great memories, so. I know I, I talk shit, but I want people to be like, okay. It's also, like, some good stuff, right? Um, <laughs> a lot of stuff here. A lot of stuff here, folks. A lot of stuff here. 17 minutes in, Frankie. Okay, oh, here's this is what I've, mean, I've been meaning to talk about this. So, tis the season. If anybody follows on Instagram, you've already kind of somewhat seen this. So... My mom's like, hey, Jake, I want, like, a good tree, like a Christmas tree, right? So I'm like, okay, cool, I'll go get it for you. So last year, I went to the place to buy Canadian Tire. It's like the JCs or whatever, you know, bullshit. These people are just, they're like carnies. They live in their fucking van, their RV. They sell trees, and then I think they might fuck off to Mexico or Florida or who knows, who knows what these people do, but they're pretty much fucking carnies. They're gypsies. So I go there, and instead of walking around, I just literally was like, okay, first one I saw, boom, I'm grabbing it. There's, like... The, the shrubs, the small section, the big so I see like the small, medium section. I'm like, boom, grab it. Awesome, let's go. And then it looked half, half decent. So the lady goes, oh, if nobody came, I was going to, you know, use that one for myself this year. Like, it's such a good tree. I'm like, oh, great, great, great. Just hook, line, sinker. The bitch probably says it to fucking everybody. So, okay, 40 bucks. So, boom, I give her the 40 bucks. So I'm fucking, you know, finagling this in my car. I got a Jetta, balling. And uh, we get in my... In my Jetta, then we, I go home and I'm, you know, I'm smelling. I'm like, man, why would anybody get a fake tree? Like this tr real tree is fucking awesome. So I get it out. I get it in my house. I get my mom. Hey, stand it up. She's bolting it. Like I'm bolting it in at the bottom. She's standing it up. Great. Uh, she she decorates it. You know, very. You know, we got Christmas. We got Michael Bublé going. We got CeeLo Green. We got some Frank Sinatra. We got it all going on in the background. Very Christmassy. It's fucking phenomenal. So next day I'm in my office. I'm working on some shit. And I hear this fucking tree fall over. And I fucking, like, I hear a big bang and shatter. I'm like, oh, fuck. I know it's the tree, right? Like, I fucking know it. I don't want to deal with it. So I'm like, didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. 
eventually it fucking I, knew, I had to face that it happened it's like when you get the call from the doctor hey you have chlamydia you're like oh fuck i don't want to deal with this we're gonna go get the four pills you shut the fuck up and life goes on anyways i hear the tree so i go downstairs i look it's a fucking it's a disaster right half the trees fucking just all fucked up I mean, all the decorations shattered. We put water, like, at the base of it, fucking everywhere. And it's, like, wood floor. So it's, like, probably should clean that up. I'm, like, oh, my God, right? So I'm fucking, you know, I get a bunch of uh, bunch of towels. I'm cleaning. I'm doing my best before, you know, my mom gets home. I want to have it all fixed, right? Doesn't happen. She shows up. My mom, the fiery Italian woman here, she's, like, get this fucking tree out of my house. She grabs an ornament, fucking gronk spikes on the ground, right? She's, like, fuck. And I'm, like, oh, my God. Because there's so many times in my life I've grabbed shit and just smashed it on the ground or fucking threw shit. Cause it's like, I have the kind of energy where it's like, if it's if shit's going down, not for me, I'm burning. Like, everyone's coming down with me. Like, I'm a black hole. Like, if I'm getting fucked, we're all getting, like, I'm bringing the whole thing down. And I always thought that was something I got from my dad, right? But see my mom just snap that way and start, you know, smashing Christmas ornaments. I was like, fuck, you know. That's, that's, that's Christmas shit. And that's also where I got this from. Like, I got that energy from there, you know? So I'm like, mom, just get the fuck out of here. Like, get out of here. So, uh, she's like, I'm gonna go hack a dart, you know? She's a big weed person, but, you know, she'll hack a dart from time to time. She's like, I need, I need a dart. I'm getting out of here. She, like, she quit smoking every couple months, but not really, you know, one of those. But God bless her. So she's out just popping darts. And I'm like, fuck, I gotta clean this. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna clean this up by myself. So I call, I call my buddy Cam over and. We're picking it up and fucking trying to clean this shit. It's just a disaster, right? What I realized was this tree has fucking spina bifida. It has scoliosis. Scoliosis. I don't know. Oh, fuck, I can't say it. This tree has scoliosis. That's definitely not how you say it, but we're going with it. So this fucking tree, like the root of it, is all fucking curved and fucked up. I got scammed here from this fucking gypsy at Canadian Tire. So no wonder it fell over. So once we pick everything up, you know, I'm stabbing it into the fucking, you know, thing like I'm King Arthur. Just stabbing it in the base. He's holding it. We get it bolted in like as tight as fuck as we can. It's still fucking leaning and fucking leaning tower pieces that could fall over any moment. So fuck, we got like a thing you hang posters with, like a metal... What? We get a metal uh, iron thing and like bang it into the wall. This tree's nailed into the fucking wall, redneck style. This thing's not falling over if fucking Godzilla walks by and gives it a fucking bump. Like, this thing's nailed into the fucking wall now. It's so fucked up. I'll post a video here. It's such a fucked up Gordo tree. It's all, it's, it's bald, it's missing shit, it has scoliosis. It's a fucking disaster. But, it's Christmas, you know, and that's, that's God right there to me. That's what you fucking need. You need the Christmas spirit. And that's what it is, you know. Your mom breaking shit, the tree being fucked up. This is all, this is what you need for Christmas. If everything just went right, that's what I said to her. I'm like, Mom, we've had trees for, you know, a bunch of years. I don't remember them. This motherfucker, you're going to remember this tree the rest of your life. But yeah, the scoliosis tree is fucked. And I'll remember it and laugh about it and everything's fine. Life goes on. So, in the future, now, I can see why nobody gets a real tree. I'll probably get a fake one and put a bunch of fucking car fresheners that smell like pine wood in them. Or pine needles and I'll be fucking fine. But... That's how it goes. Uh, what else? We'll do a little, a little more Christmas stuff here. I just want to... I had a Christmas family get together a week ago, a week or two ago. Which I know is a little fucking early, but I guess that's the only time everybody could get together. I was at my great aunt Linda's house in Toronto. And she's dope. Uh, she's the one really when I was a kid who got me into reading a lot. Would take me to the library, would take me to Mabel's Fables in Toronto. And really just kind of, you know, help me grow my imagination when I was a kid. And, you know, she's one of the best aunts I've ever had. She's my mom's aunt. So she's my great aunt, both, you know, family-wise and metaphorically. Um, so we're at her, her house. She's, you know, balling in Toronto. She's always been like a principal or some, like, sick job. And my Uncle Doug's there. And I'll try to, like, add the footage in here. But Uncle Doug is... They don't watch this, so I can just say whatever I want. <laughs> uncle Doug is pretty much a gay man, right? My uncle, you know, he's pretty much a gay guy, right? And he used to be, like, have a huge barrel and just drink and smoke weed. And sometimes he would just break out in opera singing. Like, in the middle, you're just, ah, la, la, and start singing opera. 
But no joke, he was fucking dope at it, though. Like, he, he would just break out an opera, and you'd be like, oh my god, this guy's the voice of an angel. Like, he was he was the songbird of our generation, stepbrothers. But he literally was such a good singer, like, such a good opera singer. And, like, funerals and stuff, he'd be in the back just giving her, man. And he one time he pulled a flute out and started going at it like fucking Ron Burgundy. Like, this guy, he could fucking, he was a baller. Like, he could... He'll suck your cock and play the flute. Like, he'll whip his ass. <laughs> but it's, you know, so now he's, uh, you know, he's lost a ton of weight. He's fucking, you know, intermittent fasting. He's keto. He's fucking vegan. He's you know, all the bullshit. He's sober. You know, no weed, no alcohol, nothing. And at the family thing, we're all fucking drinking. I bring, you know, a baller to a Bacardi sponsored. And we're fucking all boozing, laughing, having a good time. And I can see he's there just fucking white knuckling, right? Like this guy was just, oh, he wanted to grab that Bacardi, all the wine, just fucking double fist it and suck all that fucking booze out. I could see him just struggling with it, right? So I'm like, Uncle Doug, uh, I thought you were going to give us a show, you know? Like I'm, I'm being like serious. Like I don't want him to know that I'm fucking with him. So I'm like, uh, you know, opera singer, where's the flu? Like, come on, we need a show, right? He was playing his guitar a little bit, but nothing too serious. So he fucks off and we're all doing shots, having a good time. This guy comes around the corner like I've never seen anybody in my fucking life. He comes in hot. Fucking harmonica just. <laughs> and he, you know, he missed a note or two. I'm not going to lie, but we'll give him that. Dude, this guy starts fucking hammering the harmonica like he's fucking Frank Sinatra. Or whoever the fuck the greatest harmonica player is. It's my Uncle Doug. The guy used his mouth a lot, obviously. So he's just fucking going at it, man. He's giving her, and it's a show. I, I think my cousin Megan or somebody, somebody got a video of this. Maybe it was Jess, uh, Bear Butts girlfriend, but somebody got a video of this. And he's just fucking hammering it now. I literally was crying laughing. I was like, there's nothing funnier than this, than Uncle Doug giving her right now. So God bless Uncle Doug. And I know the moment, and then we all end up going to like the Christmas market and stuff. And obviously, like, if you go to somebody's house, whatever booze, like, you don't finish, you kind of leave there as a present, right? Like, a little wine, a little beer, whatever. I know the moment we all left that guy's house, he was just fucking drinking in the garage and fucking relapsing and probably just freebasing cocaine and injecting heroin. Just had a great night, you know? And hopefully life works out for him. Hopefully, you know, the relapse, you know, doesn't kill him or send him into a downward spiral in life and he's okay. But, you know, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> so... I don't know, we'll see. It was weird, too. I'm talking to all my little cousins, and they're like, you know, let's say, in my mind, they're like, you know, little kids, like three or four years old, but they're like in grade nine and grade ten. It's like, holy fuck, you know, I'm the old guy now. And they're showing me all these chicks on fucking TikTok that are like 14, with just tits out, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't see this, but keep showing me more. And I'm like, oh, back in my day, we had, you know, Vine was our thing, right? And they're like, oh yeah, I heard of Vine, I never saw it. And I'm like, I'm the back in, back in my day guy. But that's fine. You know, I'm old. I'm, I'm fucking young. I'm 24 years old. So suck my cock. What else do we got? Oh, so the haircut. I was thinking about this. How fucking annoying, like, people are to barbers. Because pretty much a barber is, like, similar to a bartender. Or even, like, just doing a pod like this. It's pretty much you're a therapist. Because these people, like, you know, my barber, for example. Good Italian guy, Sav. And he literally just deals with people nonstop excuse me, nonstop, like, talking about nonsense. And, like, even today, we started talking about the Irishman, and it was good. I think I make him laugh when we get along, but I realized I had a 10-minute rant about why The Godfather 3 doesn't work, <laughs> which is just some, like, intense film geek stuff. And I'm going, yeah, so the thing is, the movie works, right? It's a good movie, but it falls apart because the daughter, spoiler alert, the daughter... It's a terrible actress. So in the end, when she gets, you know, killed and Michael's holding his daughter dead, we're rooting, we're actually excited because she's such a bad actress. So the whole movie, we're like, fuck, when's this bitch going to die? Where if it was played by a different actress and she died, we'd feel really bad and heartbroken for him. So that's why the movie falls, falls apart in my opinion, right? And I'm like saying this, I, and looking back, he's just like, oh yeah, yeah. What the fuck is this guy talking about, man? Why are you breaking down Godfather 3 to me right now? Like, here's your haircut and get the fuck out of here. So... God bless fucking barbers, man. They got to deal with everybody. And I think I'm probably one of the more entertaining clients because I think a lot of people go in there and just fucking don't say anything, which is so creepy. If you get a haircut and say nothing the whole time, you might be a serial killer or you don't like your barber. Like he's just like, you're going into magic cuts in the mall and he's just doing it. Like I like all my barbers. I've like, I haven't liked them. 
Even in kits at fucking, I think the place is called Maverick. Jack Cockler. True name, real guy. Giant nose. We've never won him at a coke party. He had cancer. Fucking came back from it. Started his own business. That's that fucking foreign immigrant mentality. He's fucking working, dude. This cancer? Fuck you. I'm starting my own business. That's the guy you want in your corner. So, uh... I think he was Turkish, so he was just a fucking warrior. And, uh, yeah, great haircuts, and we always talk and shoot the shit and laugh about stuff. But that's what you want in a barber. You want to see him once a month. If I had money, I'd go fucking twice, two or three times. And obviously, I need it. You guys see me in previous podcasts. I look like I'm fucking homeless. But, you know, once or twice a month, get a haircut, look good, hang out. But you can't, here's the thing, too. <laughs> you can't have a black barber. If you have a black barber, you're going to be there all day. Like, there's, and anybody from Brantford knows this. There's this guy, Dre, and I love him. He's Master Barber Dre. He's really, he's a beauty. He wears Gucci vests. Like, he's fucking dope. But this guy, man, and we always go, we all, like, in high school go get haircuts there because, like, the cool thing to do. And one time, I think he bought us booze, actually. Like, we ordered, like, a booze. And we're like, Dre, go out and buy it for us. And he did. And then we're all drinking in the shop. It was dope. But this guy, man, you'd have a, you'd book a haircut, like, for, like, okay, you know, three o'clock, let's say you'd show up there, you know, three o'clock. You'd be like, okay, yeah, man. Like, uh, there's a few people ahead of you. There's seven people in the shop that all had an appointment at two at three, whatever. So you're like seven people behind. So you're like, oh my God, this is going to be like two or three hours. So you either go home and you may or may not lose your spot in line. Cause other like, so let's say you go home, right? Then you come back at five. Now one or two people are somehow ahead of you, which is, I, I don't understand how that happens, but that happens. And so then you're waiting another hour or two. It's seven o'clock by now. Your hair goes up three. Your whole day is fucking nuked. Then you get in the chair. He'd kind of start. And he'd always say this, man. He'd always be like, oh, bro, were you wearing a hat or something? Because, like, I don't know why he said it. I was like, are you wearing I'm like, I've never wore a hat in my life, dude. Look at my head. So he's like, oh, okay. And then he'd just fucking, like, start. And he always had the black guy cackle like that. <laughs> like that one. It was so funny. So I'd always make him laugh and shit. But, uh, he'd literally, like, be, like, in the middle of, hair, middle of your haircut, and you're looking at the guy, oh, look at that fucking arm, but you're looking at the, you're looking at the guy from the Three Stooges, like, the fucking bowl cut, to line up the fade, and he'd be like, oh, dude, I'm starving, dog, I haven't ate all day, and he would just leave, and go to this fucking, I forget the name of it, but it was some, Broster's Chicken, it was, like, a fried chicken place that his, uh, cousin owned, and then, like, not even being racist, this is, this is factually, like, this happened. He'd just go there, and he'd be just sitting there. You'd be sitting in the chair and be like, I look like fucking Three Stooges guy right now. I got a bowl cut. <laughs> and then, so it's like, you're committed. And that, at this point, it's 8 or 8.30 at night. He'd come back, just kind of eat in front of you. All right, dog, have a little spray. You know, maybe have some alcohol. You'd be like, all right. So then he'd finish your haircut. It's 9, it's nine or 10 at night by the time your haircut gets done. And it was a pretty good haircut. He always went too short, like too kind of fade and too... Uh, I think this haircut, maybe the top is a little too short, but he'd always go too short and kind of go like white wrapper mode, but it was a good haircut. But you got to have a relationship with your barber is the point of that. So uh, on that note, time for a sip. <sighs> 33 minutes. I feel like there's so many things to get into here. Do we do a Jim Gordo's? Maybe we save it. I think we're going to save the Jim Gordo's. I think we're going to do... We're going to do a quick... We're going to do a quick broad corner. And I think we're going to call it, call it a pod, ladies and gentlemen. So broad corner. I'm doing well as far as unfollowing whores. I've unfollowed a lot of whores. Now, here's the problem, though. Every... You know, every five I unfollow, I unfollow. Like I re, I follow like new one or two. So, you know, two step forward, one step back is kind of the method I'm going at. But oh, mic drop, gotta edit that. Probably won't. But uh, yeah, so that's going well. Looking at less pornography, trying to do that. It's tough though. There's a lot of good footage out there. You know, especially in December when it's just no dick December, and you're just you know. Looking to just eat pizza and stay at home and beat off. But, you know, it's a battle. But Instagram, yeah, so I'm doing better at that. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about here. Girls, stop fucking saying that you're 5'10 or 5'11. You're not. Any fucking tall bitch out here that's watching this, which is none. But 
God doesn't make bitches 5'11". You are either, as a chick, you're either 5'9", or you are 6 feet tall. There's no in-between. There's no 5'10 and a half. There's no 5'11". No, no, no. You're 5'9", or you're a 6 foot tall broad. And that's fine, because I will take you down, because I'm a giant. But don't fucking come at me with that 5'9", five, 5'10", five, or no, 5'9 is fine, sorry. Don't come at me with that fucking 5'10", five, 5'11 five, energy. You're starting this off with a fucking lie. You know, and that's not where I want to start this off with. So, stop lying about that, ladies. You're six foot. I feel, uh... <laughs> some of these are just looking to get in trouble. I feel like a lot of chicks, too, uh, just, like, listen to Call Her Daddy. And Call Her Daddy, obviously, they're huge, but, uh... Call her daddy literally has sixes out here acting like they're tens. Quote me on that. Put it on my fucking tombstone. That's facts. Like you got chicks out. And people have to realize this. At the, like guys, at the end of the day, chicks will only, will always go with their best option. So if a chick's like, oh yeah, I'm going to come over and do whatever. And then, you know, a local hockey team goes, hey, come over. We got Coke and there's 10 of us here. They're going there. <laughs> That's the thing. And here's another thing too. Chicks who bang a lot of hockey players. I, I'm sure a lot of hockey players watch this and I have friends who are hockey players and they'll fucking agree with me on this. There's not a more disgusting group of, of people than hockey players. They're the dirtiest, grimiest guys. They're all fucking missing teeth. They don't like all of them do the dirtiest sex fucking just running trains and roasting and just they're very unclean people. They're fucking savages. I love it. Like I'm all for that. But these people are savages. So if you're a chick out there who's just getting railed by a hockey team who goes, oh yeah, I used to be in the fucking O, and really you're just in a beer league now, get your life together, man. <laughs> like, do better. Um, and also, oh fuck. Chicks, stop doing filters on Snapchat, man. The fucking stretch lip one and the eye stuff, like, it's not, okay, it's not funny. And obviously you're self-conscious about your face. Don't be. Your face is your face. We're guys. Like, guys will literally, guys, this, guys are so down to fuck anything that we'll talk shit about a girl for 10 minutes, right? Oh, she's fucking, she has a weird ass, or fucking, she's a bitch, you know, her eyes are too close, her nose is fucked up, her hair looks stupid, what, whatever it may be, right? And just roast a chick for 10 minutes, and then at the end, we'll both be like, yeah, I'd fuck her, though. Like, that's literally guys. So I don't know why you're doing these fucking weird filters and shit. Show your ass, show your face. Who gives a fuck? Every guy will bang you. You have 2,000 followers on Instagram, even if you're a four. So it doesn't matter. Like, stop doing the filters. It just shows your own insecurity. And there's no need to be insecure. You're probably hot. And if you're not, it doesn't matter. Because guys will still fuck you. The hockey team will still run a train on you. And that's facts. Um, oh, fucking. Okay, so we're going to introduce. I know I said. <laughs> I can't. I literally can't talk about some of these things. If you could see some of these notes I have written down, I'd go to jail. Like, some of these notes are just... It, it's luna, it's a lunatic talking. It's either conversations with my friends or things I've just thought of, like, late at night. I'd go to jail for saying these things. But it's comedy. Um, so... Oh, my God. So... Oh, here's... A, last thing in broad corner. Last thing in broad corner, and we'll move on. Never date the bartender... Always date the nurse. Let me explain this, guys. I've dated a few bartenders. I fucked a couple bartenders. That's fine. Life goes on. If you're a guy who's always dating the bartender, you are a loser. Your life will go nowhere. And you're going to be fat, 40 years old, die of a heart attack, and or kill yourself and your family, Chris Benoit style. Which you don't want to do, obviously. So if you're always a guy dating the bartenders, that's fine because there's a lot of hot bartenders, right? When they're young. Here's the thing with a bartender. Their whole life, they're staying up late. Because they don't get home till 3 or 4 a.m. They're living off cash. So they have a lot of money in their wallet that they're looking to spend. It's not a money where... It's not a job where you get, you know, direct deposit. Or you get, like, you get paid, but it's like $8 an hour. It's nothing. So you're just... You have a lot of expendable cash. So you're pretty much a stripper. And anytime you're off work, you're looking to spend money because you have all this cash. Which is fine. But then you're just spending stupid money you're not saving you're not buying anything important and all you are is a hot chick who just gets you flirt with guys and get money which is that's fine i'm not hating that it's good for you if you're hot do it 
you're literally just going to do that for 20 more years though. Like you're going to be 40 or 50 still doing it still. Oh, look at Jen. She's crazy. She still does shots of us. Jen's 45 and divorced twice. Like that's not something you want to aspire to be Jen, you know, shout out Jen's out there, but you don't want to be that where the nurse, she may have to do a night shift or something well paid opportunity for career advancement. She can move around and do a million different things. Nurses are fucking hot too. A lot of them are hot as fuck. They have some sort of education background, so they prove that they can, you know, do things and put effort into stuff. Great. And a lot of times if they're doing a night shift, they're tired. So you just got to feed them and like put them to sleep. So it's pretty much like owning a pet. <laughs> That's so offensive, but it's somewhat true. So always go for the nurse over the bartender because the bartender is a dead end. And the nurse is, you know, I feel like a nurse could be a wife. They're still slutty, but a nurse could be a wife. My mom's literally a nurse, and I just said that, but, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. I don't know her life, but uh, go for the nurse, boys. Well, last section here before we finish the pod. It's called Bro Corner, and we'll do a quick one here. Bro Corner, a guy texting you at 2.30 a.m. going, what's good? Just ask if I have cocaine. Just ask me if I have a bag. Don't go... Oh, you up? What's good? Because you're not trying to fuck me, obviously. You're my buddy. Well, maybe you are, but probably not. You're literally just seeing if you have bag or if I want to do bag with you. So just say that. Don't. You up? What's good, bro? Dude, it's 3 a.m. I'm beating off to Athena Palomino and going to bed. But like, don't. Or just ask me, do you have bag? And I'll be like, no, or I won't answer. Or realistically, don't text me. But I've been on both sides of that. So, bro corner. Another bro corner. I was talking to this guy at the gym. Good guy. Buddy of mine. I'm not going to expose him or talk too much shit. Another ASMR break. Big. And he's, uh, he comes up to me and he's going, yeah, bro, this summer, I'm going to be a fucking savage, dude. Chicks are going to fucking hate me, man. Like, I'm, they're all fucking whores. Um, I'm just going to fuck them. Like, chicks are going to hate me. I'm going to do whatever I want. Be more obvious that a chick just broke up with you and you're heartbroken. It's such a guy move to just be like, oh, fucking chicks, they're all fucking whores. I'm, they're all, I want them all to hate me. It's like, hey, dude, where does that get you? Like, now you're going to be the cool guy who just bangs all these chicks and all they all hate me because I just fuck them and never talk to me. It's like, dude, relax, man. Like, and these guys too, are, they're the same guys who like, all they, the only chicks they bang are their girlfriends. So they have like four or five lifetime kills, right? And they're like, dude, if I, if I didn't have a girlfriend, I'd be fucking all these bitches. And you're like, no, you wouldn't. That's not, no, you wouldn't. Like guys, like, guys are in relationships too long and they think they, they're going to get out of them and be like, oh, dude, I'm, I'm on the market. I'm free agent. I'm LeBron James. Every team wants me. No, nobody wants, nobody cares. Nobody wants you. And then it's just like, oh, well, I'm just going to, and then the next week you're like, how's that going? Like, are, are you a savage? Like, are all the chicks hating you? And they're like, well, you know, you know, we, we talked and we worked it out and we're back together now. So, you know, hopefully everything goes well. It's like, dude, she fucked three of your friends last week and doesn't even like you anymore. And you just took her back. And you know what you did? You went to a bar one night and maybe finger, like finger banged a chick on the dance floor, did bag till, and you were the guy texting at 3am for bag, being a savage. And now you just took her back and you know, your friends are like, you're like, fuck, like we all, all your hockey friends are going, we're going to train on her. Like, I don't know why you're taking her back and that's life, you know? And then <laughs> you're not a savage. You're just a guy who has a girlfriend that <laughs> all your buddies fucked. I know a couple guys like that. Luckily, I don't think I'm that guy, but I'm <laughs> just somebody DM me. just like, I fucked your chick, Jake. Like here's an, here's a porno I made of her, a Dave Portnoy fucking deep oil rig fucking. And I fucked your chick. I'd be like, oh, cool. That's great. I don't think so though, but maybe, who knows? It's life, but, uh, it's life. It's, it's what it is. It's what it fucking is. And on that note, who cares? Episode 10 in the books. I'm going to edit it later tonight after the gym. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. It'll be posted Friday. Enjoy the weekend. Get ready for Christmas. You savages. Smell you later. What the fuck is this? All right, if you like what you just saw and you want more of it, click on one of these clips wherever it goes. Watch another one. Subscribe. Fucking notify. Fucking like. Send it to 10 of your closest friends. If you don't have 10 friends, 
Who cares?